discuss how legal ideas are transformed into big dreams. A lot of the information that we presented here today, there are a lot of activity sheets. So we encourage you to download some of that information. Also, there's a digital swag bag with... Good afternoon, everyone. Gather up, gather up. It's Wednesday, another edition of Little Bite Ideas. I am Dorit Whitlock. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Samuel Fields Consulting Group, and we are delighted to welcome all of you to our show today. I, of course, don't do this show alone, so let me get my co-host in here, Megan Samuel Fields, our CEO. Hey, Dorit. Good afternoon, everyone. So glad that you're here. All right. So we continue this week celebrating Women's History Month. Last week, we had a wonderful show where we had a very um, dynamic young lady who, as we celebrated International Women's Day, walked us through the whole digital space. And she's, you know, um, she's an entrepreneur, has opened her own company, using a lot of self-learning tools and figuring it out as she goes and doing well. So we applaud her Absolutely. and we continue to celebrate women in different spheres throughout the month of March. Well, we are delighted today because in addition to it being international, I'm sorry, Women's History Month, it's also National Reading Month. And we believe that women who lead also read. And so we are delighted to have a former classmate Yes. Uh, Beverly George Esquire. I like using that Esquire thing. And Beverly is based in New York. She is an attorney. She practices in New York. She'll tell you all about it, the different courts, Supreme Court and federal court, and she'll help us figure it out. But she's, she, she's a lady boss, but she's also an avid reader and a literacy advocate. And she's here to tell us today about the benefits of reading and also a very exciting project that she's working on with friends of the Antigua Public Library. So it's my distinct pleasure to welcome Miss Beverly George to our virtual stage. Hey, Beverly. Hi, Hi ladies. Going. Oh my God, we're twinning. You're, you're <laughs> more color than me, but I guess we really are in the color. Brightening the corner where I am. Oh, <laughs> nice, <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> Fantastic. So welcome to Little Bites Idea, Little Bites, Little Bite Ideas. I'm Thank you for out. having You're me, right ladies. And, I'm surprised and you my haven't been on. What took you so long? We've been on, what, well, now, a year and a half? <laughs> wow. Yes, it's been a year and a half. Yes, a year and a half. Really amazing. And yes, it was have an idea. Just run with it. That's what we Just did. Just run with it. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. Absolutely. We had an idea and had a show up and running in like two days. Well, Dari, that's how you move. So <laughs> why am I not surprised? Right. <laughs> right. She called me at, I think, five o'clock a morning. I'm an early riser. So she had this idea and we were chatting about it and just bouncing ideas and by, I think about 12 o'clock that day, we had something kind of concrete. And by the next day, we were up and running. Wow. We were up and running. So, you know, if you're crazy and you have a crazy sidekick, <laughs> you need, you know, you that's need, all you need. need. That. That's yeah. all you need. <laughs> you need that. Just an <laughs> idea and a friend. You know, it's so great to see you, Bev. It's yeah. great to I, see you, I too. hear you all the time. Do you? <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Great. So I, gotta ask you you, I gotta ask you this, Beth, before we get further into this. When we were in second form, did you ever think you would be Beverly George Esquire? No. No. <laughs> I just wanted to pass my exam. 
You know, it's amazing. I yeah. just wanted to pass oh my, my exams gosh, and get we didn't have where we came from. We didn't have dreams like that. <laughs> yeah. Not because I wanted to get picked for netball. Yeah, netball. which lawyers yes. did we know? Or even women. We heard about Bernice Lake. Yeah. Yeah, but, but they were nice. like so far removed from I'm us. I'm telling you. So removed, you know. Yeah. But we knew we had potential because somehow we were pushed in that direction. That is true. I think they one thing about the preps in particular, um, I think they somehow instilled that that we were special. We we could yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember the first time that I drove past Antigua Girls High School. I was about four years old. My father drove a deuce and a quarter, right? And my father used to say to me, Sandman, that's what he used to call me. Sandman, that's the school that you're going to go to. That school is for special girls. Oh, wow. Not every girl can go there. Only special girls could go oh, there. Wow. You know, so imagine the first day that I went there, it was just, it was just magical. Oh, wow. I can imagine. Yeah. That well, we crazy. joined much later and we kind of migrated back to Antigua from Barbados. And I don't think we knew the difference, really. <laughs> we kind of know it was a special school because we yeah. that wasn't the first school we went to. We went to yes. Foundation Mix for a year. Wow. But um, I kind of knew after leaving Foundation Mixed to go to Antigua Girls High School, you could tell you were in a different place. Yeah. Well, they told you, you know, all young girls are to be seen and not heard, yeah. and all the, the things that you 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 you're different. You remember you couldn't, go to town? you couldn't dare be seen in town after school hours. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you're supposed well, to come with a straw hat. hat. Of course. <laughs> Dressing, that's, not, that's not for this that's not for yes. this session you know what let's get back let's get we back on we can have this conversation all day long and if there are any ags um alumni in our audience just Crap. drop us a line and raise your hand and tell us ags in the house whether you went to the preps whether you joined in the forums we'd love to acknowledge you i gotta say one more thing when you mentioned straw hats oh one memory I have of the straw hats, you know, once you're leaving high school and you're going out on some event, you have to wear the hat. Mm -hmm. And we used to go across to the PM school's library. Do you remember I that? I remember. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we used Definitely. to put our straw hats on and we have to have a partner. You're walking in twos. I remember. You walk in twos. To the Princess Margaret Library. And I was always a reader. So I was in my element. I loved <laughs> going over there. Yes. I actually got to meet the librarian wow. because I used to borrow books and we used to go to Sister Lee for music. So I would borrow a book and take it back that same day to borrow another book. And she's like, what's going on with you? This is Daisy. Oh, I can't remember her name now. I, I was know the lady. I remember yeah. Daisy. But I used to borrow a book and return it the same day. And she was like, what? are you sure you're reading these books? What? <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. Loved Daisy it. was Dr. Francis's friend, remember? No, I don't. Alistair I don't. Francis, lady friend? No, I don't, but Lord of oh. Mercy be on, be, be on, be on life. I know, I know, but <laughs> you know, that's what I remember. I mean, but you know, I, I used to love books so much. My, and I think I got that love for books through my dad. My dad mm -hmm. was an autodidact, he would literally turn the pages he read ferociously wow. and he would go to the public library and purchase boxes and boxes of condemned books to bring them home for us and my sisters and I ended up creating our own library in our backyard mm -hmm. my father bought us a small house and placed it into the backyard and we created our own library and wow. we would loan books out, charging fees too. You know, you remember those big two cents and one cent. We used to charge fees when people are late. And we would lend books to the Cochrans, the Aparicios, all of them. They would come and borrow books. And they have library cards? Of course. From, <laughs> from our library. And I remember I, we live in Villa and we have Blackburn Park. And we would play there like, like we were like wild sheep, as my mother would say. And I remember wandering through the park and there was this American woman. 
and she was sitting and reading a book to some of the neighborhood children. And I saw the book and I kind of wandered by and I'll never forget her name was Miss Cornelius. And she had these books and they were telling Bible stories. Oh, wow. And I would, every day I would go down to the park and sit down with all these kids. Were those the bedtime and, stories? No, they're just okay. Bible stories. Mm -hmm. And then she noticed I had an interest and she said, why don't you come to um, Bible school, right? And imagine you're disappearing out of your mother's house and your mother asks you, where did you go? Uh, mommy, I went to Bible school down the street. Oh. <laughs> and she would have us come in and, you know, there was that proselytizing, but I would sit through it because at the end, you can borrow books and take them home. And she had books that you've never seen before. Oh, and wow. Mr. and Miss Cornelius, they were missionaries that started Grace Baptist oh. Church. Oh, okay. I remember those people. Yep. yep. Remember Grace Baptist Church people? They had mm -hmm. um, a church in Sweets. Yes, their their first church was in oh, Villa. Right. You know, old house in Villa. Yeah, I remember them. We used yeah. to go to their, their Sunday school. Yeah. Sunday, Sunday school, school. absolutely. Yes, yes. I yes. They lived in. They, didn't they move to Sweets? At some point, they did move up yes. to that they area. They lived in my uncle's house. Uncle they, house. Yes. they originally lived on T. N. Kernan Street in Villa, all the way down. And it was the two of them, her daughter, Becky, her son, Randy, and, Becky. and another, this blonde girl that would just say, are you trying to get a book? And I'm like, sure. Can I have two? <laughs> you know, but. Oh, she, wow. So your he, love of reading goes way back. Way back. Way Fantastic. Back. Yes. That. Fantastic. <laughs> yep. So Bev, tell us, why is it so important to read? I know you're a reading advocate. Well, tell, tell our audience, why is it so important to read? I guess as I'm getting older, I pay more attention to health. Everything is more health focused. And I was reading this study that says that reading helps to ward off dementia and Alzheimer's as we get older. Oh, so. Wow. That's something to entice someone to, to read if you don't necessarily like to read. But for me personally, reading helps to expand my imagination. And it would make sense that I'm in the profession that I'm in because it requires a whole lot of reading. And I love to do research. I, I tend to go deep into rabbit holes. And, you know, it's a part of what I do for a living. That, that is really wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I've always been a reader. Loved it, loved it. To the point where people thought that there was only one daughter to read because she was the talker <laughs> and I was the reader. So I would be always in somewhere in the back reading. Oh, she was a bookworm. And, wow. um, but I think what it did, it just took me to places in my mind. It did. It, so did. it expanded my vocabulary. It expanded it my imagination. Um, of course, you find out later some words that you, some big words that you, 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 you know the meaning, you realize you might be pronouncing them incorrectly because, yeah. like, you know, you're just finding them in the books, yes. but it, it really opened my, my eyes to, to knowing more and wanting to know more. Of course. I actually learned to read before I went to school. I started mm -hmm. school when I was four years old, but I already knew how to read. It helps, you guys know, it helps when your mother is a former teacher. Oh, yeah. And we had a large gold family Bible. And it actually had pictures and stuff. And my mm -hmm. mom taught me to read from the Bible, you know. And the stories used to be so interesting. I remember my favorite story was Joseph and his coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. And I would just go through and I would read it aloud. And my mother, she's always doing something while she's listening to you. Yes, yes, that's very good. You know, so I have to give props to my parents. They're the ones that instilled the love of reading. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we had something similar. We had to read every was it every weekend or something do we yep, we just have to go to the library get a book and then tell our parents 
what we read. Um, yeah, and I, I would just this, I would just borrow the same book that Megan borrowed last week and tell the story and embellish it. Or let me read, or let me read your book. I yeah. tell you about it, and then yeah. you tell them as if you read it. Yeah. No, I, I was not. Um, she was a much bigger reader. Oh, I'm more reader it. now, uh -huh. but as a child, I was I was more of a talker. Mm. My communication. I mean, I read. Huh? So but you had that gift of persuasion from a long time. What did she time. say? I'm saying some things haven't changed. You say you're more talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good then, thing. Oh, that's back, a good then, thing. back then, I was on fire. I was on octane. <laughs> but, um, no, I, Megan was always a much, I was more of a socializer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember she, she was, she just kind of like hid herself in reading and told totally me books, ignored and, me. And, and, some snacks, me. and I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need to talk. Just give me my books. I have some snacks because I got to be eating and reading. You remember that, read? Yep. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, read I actually would read the stuff after her. She'd get excited and tell me the stories, the Enid Blightons and the what have oh, you. Yeah. I always read them after her. Um, Nancy Drews and what have you? Yep. Yes, I remember Nancy Drew. We used well, to read a lot of those. That, that, oh, the, yeah. Those really opened up your imagination. They you sure know, did. Some of, the, some of the states and even some of the places that were, um, you know, the settings for some of those books. Now, when you hear some of them, you remember hearing about. Of course. You know, um, and absolutely. that's one of the beauties about reading because it allows you to travel. In Absolutely. your mind, you can travel. Absolutely. And now that I'm older, one of the things that I love to do is to travel. So imagine traveling to places that you've read about. Yep. Like a few years ago, I went to Greece. And I used to be very steeped in Greek mythology mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. reading about the Greek gods and and when I went to Greece and I actually got to see the Pantheon and I, I got to see Aww. the Hall of Adonis and it was like, so this stuff is really real, yeah. you know, and went to Delos and where I saw Delphi and, mm. you know, it just, it was your imagination coming to life. No, it's mm -hmm. really, it's that really was a good amazing. Feeling. It's an amazing mm -hmm. feeling. And yeah. then the things that you learn. I find from oh, yeah. me, um, I've learned so many things just from reading. You know, yes. it's your knowledge. Definitely. You don't have to be an expert necessarily, but at least you 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 read things and you understand. And so you, you, you're you able to even have conversations. Yeah, you're yes. informed. You're right. in touch. Yes. Yeah. And you that's know, so critical. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Now, Bev, tell us about the Friends of the Public Antigua Public Library. Okay. Tell us about you know the genesis of it and uh, how it all works. Let me tell you how it started. It's a not-for-profit in New York. It's Friends of the Antigua Public Library, and I remember about fifteen years ago, I was listening to a conversation. Um. You know, some Antiguans were having a conversation. And what came out to me was one person said, they were chiding what the young people were doing at that time. Oh, the young people don't do this, they don't do that, and so on. When I was younger, we could do this and the other. And I said to myself, you know, our children are just following us. And it's easy to say that they don't do X, Y, and Z. But if we are supposed to be adults and they're leaders, we have to make a way for them to have the opportunities that we had. Absolutely. So the first thing I did was I, I knew how much I loved the library as a child. You know, I was a bookworm in the library. And I reached out to the librarian in Antigua at the time, and her name is Dorothea Nelson. I reached out to her and I said, listen, I'm interested in starting an organization in New York to see how we can help um, address some of the needs that you have. And she said, of course, we would love that. Mm 
And she was so gracious. At that time, the library was on Market Street on the second floor. Right. And it was, it was basically an old haberdashery, you know. And it was so dark and, and everything. And so I formed a corporation. And this was upstairs Lolita's, right? Yes, yes. 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 It was there for years. For yes. years, for years. And Miss Mrs. Nelson was just so generous. To this day, she's one of my dearest friends. And she invited me in and she welcomed the organization with open arms. And I got to learn what the needs of the library um, was. And we were also advocating to move to the new facilities. Because right. as you know, we were supposed to move since the earthquake in 1974. Yes. 1974. 8th of October. Okay? And for some reason, it was never a priority. Mm -hmm. It was always on the back burner. So we joined in advocating for the move. We kept pressing for the move and finally the move came. There was a time when the library had to be closed because of security reasons. People would break in and steal. You'd think they'd steal a book, but no, they would steal other things. Wow. And they would, the library would be closed because the they would have termite infestation where furniture literally crumbled oh my goodness and you know as an attorney i'm just thinking about the liability aspect of having somebody's child having a desk fall on them falling on a chair and so on they had mm -hmm. to close down so we started a tables and chairs drive where we raised money, purchased tables and chairs so that the patrons could actually go and sit down without worrying that everything is going to break down all over them. And from time to time, we will have our spring book drive. You know, in the spring, everybody's trying to clean up and clean out. And so we invite people to donate their books and then we ship them to the library. And we, we sponsored a summer reading program for many years. And we try to be at the ready to help and assist the library patrons and the staff as much as we can in any way that we can. And, you know, in Antigua, sometimes it's very hard for people, especially government employees, to advocate for themselves or advocate what their actual needs are. So sometimes mm -hmm. you need an outside catalyst. And right. that's what we try to do. No, that's fantastic. And we also promote um, Antiguan writers, Antiguan and Caribbean writers. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. Um, tell us, before we get into that, though, of course, we are very concerned about not just literacy, but financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell, tell me, what do you see as some of the benefits of financial literacy and how, how, you know, in encouraging, especially the younger ones to read, how financial uh, literacy uh, becomes a part of the equation. It is very important for young people to be taught how to budget, how important it is to manage your money. You know, sometimes people say, um, time is money, time is money. Mm -hmm. But I, it's only when I became an adult that I realized money is time. Yes. Because when you waste money on things, you know, sometimes you say to yourself, oh, I can always make back that. You know what you can't make back? The time that it yes. took to make that money. So, again, as you get older, you know, when we're young, everything is coming Abundant. up roses. We have nothing to worry about. Unfortunately, we are not taught financial literacy at a young age and that is so critical because the time in which you really should start focusing on it is in your 20s that's when you start right. laying the foundation if you could do it earlier then you're ahead of the game yeah. you know but if you're not doing it until you're in your 30s 40s 50s you're already behind the eighth ball you catch up you know one Absolutely. thing I can say is the 
best financial person I've ever met in my life was my mother. Mm-hmm. You know, my father used to say, my mother can tell you how much grain of rice is in a pound. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, and even though he says it to dig her, he admired her because of her ability to manage money. You know, and and she did that because that's something that was intuitive to her. It's something that she loved. She was amazing at it. And I always wonder if she had the same opportunities that I had, she would probably be Chancellor of the Exchequer in England or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because she was so good at it. Mm -hmm. And she, in her earlier career, after she was a teacher, she worked at the Treasury Department. Oh, wow. You know, she worked for the Treasury. And my father, my, he would never do it in front of her. Uh, I don't know, you know, male, female dynamics at that time. He would never say it in front of her. But we would hear the stories after she passed. He would tell us, you know, at the end of the year, they have to balance the books. And, you know, your mother was big, big pregnant with your sister. And she was home. And they couldn't balance the books. And they sent for her. Mm-hmm. And she went in. You should see her walking. She can hardly walk. And she had the pencil in the back of her ear. <laughs> and everybody, they have the machine that they pull down and they count. No, she don't want her. She have a pencil. And she was able to find a discrepancy. You know, he loves to brag about wow. that. But she was so good. And she enjoyed it. You know, some of my sisters, it's amazing how some of your your siblings pick up certain aspects in, mm-hmm. in, of your parents. I certainly don't have that, but recognizing how important it is, for me, it's totally manufactured. I have to make, make an effort to make sure that certain things are done. I'm fortunate enough that I work in a system that no, they know how important financial literacy is. So almost every week there is some CLE or something. Let's talk about your pension. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about insurance, you know, so I can always learn, okay, this is how I can maximize. This is what I can do. This is how I can defer income so that it's not heavily taxed, uh, you know, because that's not where my passion is. But mm-hmm. I am fortunate enough that I placed myself in a situation where that tool is is fed to me and it makes it easier for me to manage myself. But Mm -hmm. I would always tell young people, please, it's critical. It's critical that you start and you start early and, and if you don't know what to do, speak to an adult who knows what to do with regard to establishing, you know, frameworks for financial literacy because it's critical. Fantastic. Now, Megan, I want to shift over to you because we were having this conversation earlier about what types of books Mm -hmm. would, you know, would you recommend? You are the financial guru here and also the avid reader. So (laughs) uh, for our audience, are there any books that you have found to be particularly helpful in uh, helping people learn more about financial literacy? Yes. So the first thing I would say What works for me may not work for somebody else. So find what works for you because uh, there there are so many books out there and they, the way they're written, it, it, it varies. So try and find what works for you. I think now is a great time because not only do we have the actual books, there's Kindle, there's audio books. So no more saying, I don't like reading. If you don't want to read, actually read, you can listen. Exactly. For me, my books that I like, that I have actually read, they're, they're, I'm going to list about four of them that I've read that I really like. Um, the first one is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's mm-hmm. by yes. Robert. That's a good book. Exactly. And it's a very good book. It's very good. Uh, it talks about what the rich teaches what the rich persons teach their kids about money in contrast at that and the poor and the middle class don't yes and it was an eye opener for me because mm-hmm. we surely aren't rich so we weren't taught some of the things that he spoke about 
And one of the mm-hmm. things in the book is about letting other people's money work for you. Yep. And that's new. That's not something mm. we grew up with. So that's one. Then Dave Ramsey, he is a sharpshooter. He has a lot of shows. Um, he has a lot of books as well. Um, but this book called The Total Money Makeover, and this is focusing on, on being debt-free. He is big on being debt-free. He believes mm-hmm. that you should not have debt. I honestly can't say that I agree with that mm-hmm. um, position fully, but that should always be a goal. But debt is, a, I think, it's a vehicle to get you from point A to point B, but yeah. you're not going to stay in that vehicle all the time. But Correct. Dave Ramsey and anything that he does, he has yes. podcasts, he has books. Oh, yeah. Even his like articles, you know. He's a shop. Yeah. Yeah. So you he know? is somebody that any of his books I would recommend. Very clever. Then there was one that was recommended to me. It was a little, I think a little heavy, but I got the point. It's The Richest Man in Babylon by George mm-hmm. Clayson, I think it is. And it's kind of like it's a metaphorical type of book so it's about this guy who was he was a scribe i think and then he was able to by using certain sayings and following certain maxims he was able to amass a large amount of wealth so it's it's a little deep you have to think a little bit when you read it but it it helps Mm -hmm. Psychology of money is that one. It's about. Oh, wow. It talks about. Is that me? Megan is having. Did you lose? Yeah, I think I'm having some internet issues. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, clearly now. Yeah, it's a little bit. Bit. Yeah, you hearing now. Yep. Ah, are you hearing me? Yes, yes we can um, hear you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm She's having problems having with some my challenges. internet. Is- okay. So, yeah. All right. Let's let's move on. I think she is having some challenges. Well, but that I mean, is a question I have for you. What, what the difference is. Okay, mm-hmm. she's back. Oh my gosh. Thank you, if you <laughs> yeah, You're in and out. But mm-hmm. Beth, here's so a question I have for you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, here's a question I have for go you, ahead. Beth. Um, through all the Caribbean authors that you've come across, and I know that you have, you focus on a lot of them, and there's so mm-hmm. many. Are the, I think a lot, I can't think of one in particular, but I know Finan- managing finances, box hand, going to Linstead Market, son of the banana man. You know, a lot of, I, I can go back to a lot of the poetry, the sun's mm-hmm. eye. Oh, yeah. By tense. You know, honest Steve, you know, so many different ones where mm-hmm. there were sprinklings of financial lessons. Mm-hmm. Is there a particular caribbean book or author that comes to mind who perhaps gives us lessons for life as it relates to financial literacy you know what um it's it's funny almost all of them when when you read caribbean authors Mm -hmm. there's usually certain genres subgenres you will find that uh they'll write about diaspora, migration, colonialism, Mm. post-colonialism. Sometimes they have um, um, magic, you know, when we speak of um, Obia and all of those other religion and magic and so on, it will be sprinkled with a few of that. But interspersed, they will speak about what we are used to doing collectively, like our governing structure, to push each other ahead. If it's 
keeping the money under the mattress because mm-hmm. they didn't have access to banks. If it's throwing a susu or a box hand or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, what they did to make money, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit, you know, as professionals looking back at what they write, we recognize what these things are. You know, we can see um, more to a person running a tray than, oh, that's the lady with the flambeau on the tree. That's yeah. an entrepreneur. She is managing her own affairs, you know? Mm-hmm. So while the focus might not be specifically on finance, as, as I look back at those books that we read, I can see references to our people making their way. And yes, we do focus on Caribbean authors, not just the Anglophone authors. We read Francophone and, and, and Hispanic-based books. And um, one of my, my favorite authors is Edwidge Dandekat, and she's Haitian. And we have um, Kai Miller and Marlon James of Jamaica. And we have a lot of amazing Antiguan writers. We hosted... Joanne Hill House in New York when she released the book, Oh God. And in that book, she speaks about the culture and the, the, the culture of using clay. That's a lost yeah. art in Antigua. And her family was involved in a lot of that. I think they used to do it in Cedar Grove because of the topography of the area. They have the special mud that allows them to make... Um, coal pots and planters and all of those things and you're talking about entrepreneurs using their art and and making these items and selling them you know so a lot of that was was in her book you know fantastic now tell us about the book drive that you are having and how persons can get involved and how this all works is this something you do annually we try to do it annually. Okay. You know, the pandemic kind of put a kibosh on us oh, for a certainly. bit. But um, usually we do it in March, you know, because it's the start of spring. So every Saturday in National March. National Reading Month. Yes. Every Saturday in March, um, we are at the Antigua House, the historic Antigua House, located at 12 West 122nd Street in Harlem. And we invite, if you're in New York, just stop by, drop your books off. We're there every Saturday in March. Um, if you need special arrangements, you can call us up. If you're not in New York and you're, you're in another state, you can start your own book drive. Reach out to me and I'll assist you in terms of, you know, what you should do to get those books home. But they are sorely needed in Antigua and Barbuda. All right, so we collect the books, we sort them, and we ship them to the library. And this year, we're hoping to get a few sent to Barbuda as well. Oh, Fantastic. So what about a- um, the UK and Canada? We had someone who is in the UK, who one who said she had some books. Just reach out to me, point. and I'll, I'll give you the information, who to contact, and how to ship them out. You know, we bear the cost of shipping. You know, so once we get the books, we sort them out. We make sure, you know, it's spring cleaning, not dash with everything in your house, right? right? So we make sure that the books are slightly worn or as close to new as possible. And we sort them based on genre, whether they're adults, children, and so on. And we keep an inventory and we'll ship them out to the library. So what I have about some of the school. Oh, go ahead, Megan. I know you had a question. Yeah, two questions for you, um, Bev. Are there any particular types of genres that the library specifically has a need? They have a need for everything. Everything. And then everything. from the, the local point of view, mm-hmm. is there any type of book drive that's happening locally? That's interesting. I know that there are some that go would go on from time to time, but if you would reach out to the deputy chief librarian, Miss um, Spencer, she'd be more than happy to give instructions as to, you know, how you can contribute books to the library. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would love to get involved in that. 
or Help you know you know clip. more hands make the work lighter absolutely so, they would Absolutely. be more than happy to get assistance. And I mean, I I definitely benefited from being a a, a library member. Yes. So if I can give back, I would love that. Yes, and you know it. We, as I mentioned, we have a book club, right? And, and in addition to what we do to support a library, we have a book club that meets bi monthly. And mm -hmm. when you figure that over 15 years, we've been through a lot of books, oh, you know, yeah, so years. Wow. yeah, it's been a long time. And, you know, so we have over the years, we've collected a lot of books. And so we have, um, we just have a lot of novels that we are more than happy to share. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Now, is uh, the library, the, the, the public library in Antigua, is that the only library? There or do they have like a library system? There are neighborhood system? libraries, but there is no system, you know, like like you understand um, the New York Public Library, the Queens of Public course. Library, Even their systems. Town, you know, library system. Yep. Exactly. So you have, I am right now located in Queens and we have the Queens Public Library. Mm -hmm. um, I need a book online i i can actually pick up my phone plug in my library card and it, i can check to see if a book is available right and if the book is available i can have the book delivered to the library Correct. literally down the street from me mm -hmm. because it's a network and i could go the next day and pick it up you know so that's one of the beauties of having branches so um unfortunately in what what really irks me, and, and I try to clamp down on my passion for things like this, <laughs> what really irks me is that after 42 years of independence, we do not have a branch library in Barbuda. And just oh, that's, no. it, that is just unconscionable. So the, the library you mentioned, so the, I'm sorry? The, the library you mentioned in Barbuda, you mentioned earlier, you, you sent some books to Barbuda. No, we're going to be sending books to Barbuda. And so there is no library at all or the library there is not connected to the public library there there's a school library okay right library. in the school but in terms of a like a functioning library right. that you and i understand right. there is none there functioning and there should be a branch there absolutely to, with reading privileges shared between the antigua main library right you know and there is absolutely no reason for us not to have it. You know, we're not talking about an exorbitant cost. It's something that you can get volunteers to do. It's something that you can get donations for. Right. But there's certain infrastructure that needs to be in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is something that is going to be a priority for us to push. Because mm -hmm. after all of these years of independence, there we there is absolutely no excuse for this. Right. And, you know... Um, we don't have a library culture. And I didn't realize that until I had my own children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, living in suburban towns, there is a library culture. In addition to a place where you go to get books, it's a place mm -hmm. where there are exhibits. You can go and get passes to go to various museums in New York. You know, there's so many resources that come with a library system that, you know, I, like I said, until I had my own children, having not grown up with a library system in Antigua, you don't even realize the yeah. culture that comes with a library. It's a place that people go to meet. They're yes. you know, they have meeting rooms, there are lectures, there sure. are there's so many things, cultural um, activities, amazing art shows. Um, I'm on the library, you know, mailing list. Of course, I don't get there as often as I, I want to. But I have an awareness of what's going on in town and, you know, the cultural immersion opportunities yeah. that come with a library. So it's, I, I, well, think, like I mean, granted, we're nowhere near there, but I think what one of the problems, I think, since the earthquake, as we had mentioned before, the I can't speak about prior to that because mm -hmm. I probably was too young, but they, they didn't seem to be a focus right. on the library. Yeah. And well, I'll tell you the about the library before the earthquake. 
there was a library culture. Our library has been yeah. in existence since the 1800s. Oh, wow. Right? And people did go to the library. And then we, we actually had two libraries in the city. We had the main library, which right. was and close to the post office. Library. And we had the Stilson's library, yeah, which I would as well. go I and lose myself yeah. in the book book racks around there so yeah. we did have it after school was that a private library what it was, was privately still... owned oh. it was privately owned yes okay. and as a matter of fact um you know that the antigua Pro and barbuda progressive society their records are being archived at the schomburg right. um library mm -hmm. right and in going through some of those record records Silson lived in New York and he actually donated a lot of books through Antigua Progressive Society oh, years ago, like right after the war. So, wow. you know, there is this um, there is this theme that goes around that we are not, you know, we're not really into like we used to be. And right. then after the earthquake and the library was destroyed, it took a long time for the library to find a home on Market Street. Mm -hmm. But again, it wasn't a priority, yeah. you know? And I, when my sad. son was younger, one of the things I always used to say to him, you know, like he, he, I would tell him, you know, you do this because you love this thing, or you do this because you love this person, you know, but sometimes you speak to them and, okay, that's an amorphous word. What does that mean? And I would tell him, love means priority and value. If you value something and if it's a priority, then you pay attention to it. Absolutely. You know, and that's something that we don't do. We don't place a value on these things. Mm -hmm. We don't place these things as a priority. And as a result, when you really break it down, we don't love it. We don't love ourselves. So we don't take care of these things. So mm -hmm. hopefully through Friends of the Library, we are trying to show this is a great legacy that we have had for a long time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we really should not let it disappear in the embers of history. Wow. You know? And I'm a history buff, by the way. Right. Mm. Very yeah. interesting. Megan, let's take a break, see if we have any questions, comments, Oh, we do. And then let's get really let's do. get prepared for our game this afternoon. We may have oh, to yes. cut it short yes, and have yes, fewer yes. questions. All right. So, Mrs. Samuel says good afternoon. Hi, Bev. You know, Mrs. Hello, Samuel. Hello. Samuel. <laughs> Fanny King says hello, everyone. Hi, Fanny. Antigua Nice Three. I am supposed to know who this is, but I'm not sure. Um, she says good afternoon. Miriam Samuel says, ah, Daisy Lake, right? She's my friend. Yes, I remember yes. that. Yes. yes, yes, Daisy. Oh, it's a different day. So it's a different person. I'm talking about the wrong person. See, I was Oh, scared. I know who you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You see how you can get people in trouble? Huh? Yep, I'm telling you. Scandal. <laughs> um, <laughs> Miriam That's Samuel funny. says, you were taught to read before you were born. Okay. Probably. Okay. Probably. Okay, yes. you tell me about that one. <laughs> Antigua Nice 3 says, my love of reading started when I was around seven or eight. However, I was encouraged by grandmother. In my neighborhood, all the girls read voraciously and exchanged books. That is good. Wow. That's awesome. We used okay, to exchange I a lot of Nancy Drews in high school. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Good kill for those books. <laughs> Althea Dad says, good day, a bit late, but I'm here. Glad you're here. And Tegan Nice 3 again says, reading allowed me to go places in my imagination. That's so true. I read so many books about England. To this day, I think I'm destined to live there, even <laughs> though I hate the cold. I get you. I get you. And Tegan Nice also says, I agree financial literacy should be taught at an early age. 20s is a good age to begin the training, especially in the U.S., where credit plays such a huge role in the present and future lives. Now, that is so true. That is so true. And Very then, true. In the U.S., you get credit cards so easily. Yep. But that's how they make their money. They make their money on young people. Exactly. You know? Yeah. They, get, they make their money on young people. Oh, yeah, take this card. And the kids blow through it, and it takes yeah. years to yeah. dig themselves out of debt. I don't understand. 
Uh, Ramona says, name of book by Dave Ramsey again. It is The Total Money Makeover. But just Google him. He has a lot of books yeah. and a lot of podcasts and so on. No, he's amazing. Um, okay, so are we going to go again? Yes, um, let me see. Ramona says, I'm just going to be selective. Here in the UK, my local library hosts community groups. I go to the library to work, as do other people. Um, oh, there's another question about the book. What was the name of the book? Richest Man. Okay, that's The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Clayson. Oh, Giselle. I knew I knew the person. Okay. Hi, Giselle. All right. So that's what we have for right now. And yes, do we get people ready for the game? Yes, yes. We may have to cut it down to fewer questions. Okay. We only have about five to ten minutes. Oh, dearie me. Okay. So let's All right. at least so get a couple we of questions. We are in. going to play the game. And so the I'm trying to get my slides, share screen. So the first thing that you would have to do is to go to kahoot.com or kahoot.it. And they will ask you for the game. Or you there is a QR code on the screen. Hope you're seeing it. You can use the QR code. But you go to kahoot.it, or if you have the app, and the game pin is there. For some reason. Once you enter the game pin. Let me see if I can grab it. Then you have to put in your name, and we're waiting for players. For some reason, I cannot get it. You're not getting it? Using the QR code. Okay. Try the game pin. Okay, Bev is in. <laughs> Bev is in. Anybody else? Probably should have put this up at the beginning so everybody could have been ready. But the conversation was so interesting. <laughs> and Tegan Nice is in. All right. I love my avatar. It's a tiger. Yes. <laughs> quite nice. Oh. Anybody else? We, have well, we had so many players last week. Come on, folks. Where's Lois this week? <laughs> Anybody else? Put in the game pin. Are you having any problems? Give me the give me the the pin again, please. Is it on the screen? Oh, I forgot. So Sorry. I make, no, I just want to make sure it's on the screen. One six three seven nine four five. Seven, nine, it's four. no fun with two persons because one will win and one will lose. <laughs> we need a few more persons. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Bev. I guess it's just me and you, babe. No, <laughs> Dee Dee is in. Dee Dee is in. So and okay. Bev, Dee Dee, anybody else? I'm gonna give you one more minute. One more minute. So this game is about women. It's Empower Her. That's the name of the game. And it's really oh, questions wow. on women and their financial health, their financial wellness, things that you should know, things that you should be aware of. Mona, you go, Mona. <laughs> so I'm just intrigued with all the, with these avatars. I, I know. know. I choose them. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen the avatars before. Wow. No, they usually come up, but I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can choose your avatar. Actually, you can. Oh, but you it selects one, but you have you can actually go back change. And change. It. Oh, yeah, I, I I love what the one. Yeah, I like I mine. Yeah. All right, so I think we're going to start. And just like last week, the prize is a consultation with Samuel Fields Consulting Group. There you go. All right, so let's start. Let's do this. Getting ready. <laughs> so this is quiz number two.
what does financial independence mean to women? What does financial independence mean to women? You have to answer correctly and answer correctly. All right. The answer is being able to support oneself. Okay. Let's see who is in the lead. All right. Mona. And right behind Mona is Antigua Nice. Then Bev. Didi, you didn't answer. <laughs> All right. Next question. Why do women need financial literacy? All right. All of the above. You need to be able to deal with the rising cost of living and inflation. You need to set a good example for your children in managing finances. And you need to be confident in your decision making by understanding the use of money. So it's all of the above. Well done. And Bev has moved to the top. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's see what's going on here. And Antigua Nice is just behind and Didi is making strides. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Next question. Which of these behaviors are as a result of financial illiteracy? Make note of that. Financial illiteracy. Correct. Everyone got it. Let's see who got it correct. So it's all of the above accumulating large debts, poor spending habits, and lack of preparedness for emergencies. Those are all behaviors as a result of not being financially literate. And in the lead is Bev <laughs> with Antigua Nice, Didi, and Mona. All right, let's see. Next, which of the following statements is best about conversations on money? Conversations about money are now oh, everybody got it right. Correct. Conversations about money are good because it helps to build women's confidence and financial literacy. Excellent. And that's so true. We need to stop hiding our conversations about money and speak about them. But Bev means she is not giving up the lead. <laughs> Nor is Antigua nice. She's staying in second place. Let's move on. Financial education. And the answer is all of the above because it does all of the above. All right. Let's move on. Interest of time. So Antigua Nice, you are ahead, followed by Dee Dee, then Bev, then Mona. All right. Antigua Nice, I see the competitive spirit is coming out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So talking about money with a partner. Everybody got it right. That's so true. Talking about money with a partner can take the strain off the relationship and strengthen your combined goals. May not be an easy thing to do, having the conversation, but it will be worthwhile. And Antigua Nice remains in the lead, followed by Didi, then Mona, then Bev. All right. We what? Are I got to I gotta pick up my game. You better. Because you only have one final question. The okay, let's do this. Do or let's die. do this. All right. 
the best way to establish an emergency fund is to everybody got it right that's the best way set up an automatic savings deposit from your salary so you don't have to worry about it okay drum roll third place mona all right second place PD. all right and first place is Winner, winner, winner. That was fun. Antigua, nice. That was very Katie good. And Mona. Awesome. All right. So, you know, financial literacy can be a very daunting, boring um, subject. But every week we try to make it as fun as possible. And we are going to continue to play Empower Her. We have what? Two more Wednesdays? Two more Wednesdays. So we have um, two more Wednesdays to play this competitive game and to really focus on some of our financial habits. You know, women continue to lag men, as we know. Um, Bev, I'm sure you deal with this. <laughs> You're in a male-dominated type of job, and I'm sure you see this all the time where, you know, they, they think nothing to compensate men at a certain level. Yes. And then, you know, we get, we, we get maybe cents on the dollar compared yeah. to what men get. But luckily we fight for legislation to make sure that it balances out. And the fight continues. And the it fight continues. continues. And we, ha we have to do as much as we can to empower ourselves. Yes. Yep. And, and hold their feet to the fire. Yeah especially in the area of financial literacy and financial knowledge. So we're going to do our part. Absolutely. Well, this was a very exciting uh, discussion talking about reading. reading. Like we said, this hashtag women who lead. It was, lead. wasn't it? Yes. And, uh, Bev, we want to thank you for joining us. For much, really, um, we, we love connecting with you, but um, congratulations on all the great work that you and your colleagues are doing for the Friends of the Antigua Public Library. Anyone in the diaspora who wants to help, definitely drop us a line. We'll put you in touch with Bev, whether you are in uh, the United States, Canada, the UK. Uh, Bev, let us, just let us know that uh, arrangements can be made to ensure that your book donations make it to Antigua. And, and even if, if you're, you're in Antigua, you can help. You can exactly. donate books yeah. and um, you can advocate for the library because right now, in addition to books, they need pencils. They need they oh. need office supplies. Mm -hmm. They need, you want to know what their biggest need is? They need internet access. Oh my goodness, they don't have that? What they have is the generosity of a corporate citizen what? ACT who gave them complimentary service when mm -hmm. they were transitioning from Market Street to wow. um but isn't this a government Queen's entity? It is. Oh, so wow. I would kindly ask people in Antigua and okay. outside of Antigua to okay. petition the ministries involved. Okay. Tell me the name of the, the li librarian. Is Mrs. Mannix still there? Miss Mannix is there. Reach out to Mrs. Mannix or you reach out to Mrs. Spencer. And Spencer? Yes, they would be grateful for any support. But remember, the library is a part of the public commons. That's where elderly should be able to go and sit down Absolutely. and talk where you can have events, where children oh, do their the homework. That's what elderly do here. That's what they want to do, use the internet. But mm -hmm. staff, you don't, don't have computers. The internet that they are getting as, um, as a gift from the private company, it's really not a lot. And it can only be used for staff to get their work done. Oh, and a no. few of the patrons, so am, God forbid. We we need I, to do I, better. I, we can do absolutely. better. We need to do better. You know, we need. We have so many 
brilliant people in Antigua and Barbuda, and we have the capacity. And as I said, love is a matter of values and priority. Yeah. We need to value and prioritize our public library for our elders and for our young people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, if you need if you need a job done, speak to a woman, and that's what we're doing. That's Getting what we do. Involved to get on top of the situation. Because and I'll, I'll speak with you separately, Bev. They're, they're yes. just, I think we can do much more. On we the can do a lot better. I think it's a lack of awareness. People, I, I had no clue that I was we were, not we were so. Um, you know, I'm yeah. aware of the work that you've been doing over the years, but I had no idea that yes. our um, system, our library system, was so far behind. And let's not forget Barbuda. And let's not forget Barbuda. Let's not forget Barbuda. You yep. Know, we cannot forget Barbuda. Yeah, because Fantastic. we have to and Barbuda. Yes. Well, do we have any final thoughts? Uh, CEO, Bev, before we sign off, we're a little over time, but we thank our guests for uh, joining us today. And of course, everyone who joined us. I see we have a, we have a comment. Thank you, Ms. Denard. She has, she's decluttering her craft stash and she has loads Perfect. of papers. And she also asked for Bev's info. Is that something you want to give of here? Of course, of course. Yeah, we'll um, drop it in the chat. Okay. You have my email address and Well, you we, can just, just say it. So at least they it's have it. Bev George. It's very easy. One word, Bev George ESQ at Hotmail. Okay. Girl, Hotmail is still going. Listen, I just <laughs> let AOL go. What are you talking about? <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> Thank you so oh, much, Bev. Right. This has been enlightening. Thank you. you this was really great. a little passion again in me. I really have to do more for the public library. Yes, yes. So we all I'm do. I'm going to round up my friends and see how we can do more. We do they have do. a website at the public library that we can post? How do people they get actually information? do? They actually do. If you Google Antigua um, Public Library, you'll be able to locate it. Okay. okay. You know, but they do, and they do host events. They host events there. They host events virtually. And it's a one lovely thing building. I, one thing I will oh, say about the staff: you, the staff of the public library they're just second to none they are people who are so qualified most of them have a first or second degree that they've received from far-flung places like scotland and whatever oh nice but they come back to antigua and they work at the public library and that's where they want to work and to you know to come back and to fight so, for so internet the resources you know you you know they try to to make things work and I'm so grateful to them and for them and I figure I have to do whatever I can do to help them. Yeah. And so do the members of Friends of the Antigua Public Library. Okay, so we need to have an Antigua branch of that Friends of the Antigua Public Library. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. And Nick, I'm not sure who is Nick. You want me to count you in? Tell me who you are so I can count you Thank in. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Is, is it our Nick? I don't know if it's our Nick, but I'll find out. And Ramona is in. All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to get a little group going. We're going to get this live. That's right. That's, right. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. And, and Absolutely. you know, I'll send you information out about our book club. Our next Nicole. book that's Ooh. coming up is yes. uh, we are actually reading a book from Marlon James. And it is Red. What is it? Red Wolf. Marlon James. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a virtual um, hookup so that people? Yes, outside? we we do okay. virtual. We we meet virtually and in person. We are trying to get back to in person, right? But we do have um, virtual because you know that's so. How can persons be added to your world. mailing list? Just reach out By to me. Sending you an email. Yes, oh. just reach out to me. Okay, you yeah, know, you and we will be office, more yeah. than happy. Okay, here's so the name of the book. Uh -huh, tell the me. book is Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. And it's supposed that to be interesting. the Caribbean version of Games of Thrones. 
mm. Game of Thrones. Game so of Thrones. you know that there's going to be sequels. I'm telling and Marlon you. James oh. is an amazing writer. All right. An amazing writer. Okay. And I was the literary it? festival that we had in Antigua several years ago. Yes, yes. Yeah, that nice. needs to come back as well. Yeah. It really amazing. does. It really does. Yeah. It, so it was amazing. But we're working on all of that, you know. Nice, nice. And a few friends have been telling me we need to start a book club. And I've been saying, yes, yes, I'm going to start. So, yes, I'm going to start. <laughs> no, it's that's... amazing. It's really right, good. I definitely want to get this book. It's really good. Yes. Um, and tell me about your book club. I'd love to join. Just, we'll add you. Well, yeah, we'll add I'll, send you. You, I'll send you an email. Excellent. Cool. All right, awesome. ladies, thank you okay. for having me. Well, this so was amazing. This is awesome. Yes. And we so want to thank fun. you once again. Don't, don't be a stranger. Fun. That's all we do. It has to be. How fun. can we be it's strangers when we're family? We're probably Absolutely. family. You know, Absolutely. we've been together since we were children. I know, exactly. right? With our Antigua Girls High School uniform. Exactly. You know, and I have to. Blue let, to the world. To the world. And I have to let people know that I'm forever indebted to my learned friend because she's the one that sponsored me to practice in Antigua and Barbuda to be admitted. My pleasure. It was you my know. absolute pleasure. It was amazing. <laughs> no, I, I, I think it was the fastest um, turnaround I've ever met. I, I ran into I'm bed telling one, you. That fast. one that fast. At, at an Antigua house I event. Know. And she's telling me she's thinking about you know, the bar. Oh gosh, I remember that. Bar. I remember yeah. that. Yes. I'm like, did you speak to my sister? And she was like, oh. she's looking at me. And I'm like, listen, I remember when I said to you, Bab, let them know that is good school you went and you know people. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to her, because she was telling me about some challenges she was having. Yeah. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. Let them know you went to good school and you know people in high places. I'm going to call <laughs> Megan. And then, I, and then I think I... I think I texted you. Yes, you did. WhatsApp to right there and then. I know. And, you, and she was ill. She was ill. Yes. Yes. You were yes. ill. Yes. You hardly yeah. talk. Next thing I know, I'm seeing stuff in the paper. Like, <laughs> what, 60 days maybe? Less than that, actually. Yeah, it was well, the power of networking. And That's how we do it. And determination. And yes. determination. And, you know, yep. um, sisters have been sisters. There you go. Like I said, women who lead, read. There you go. So, folks, okay. thank you so much for joining us. Do we thank have a, do we have a guest confirmed for next yes, we, Wednesday? We have at least one guest. We may have two, but we have one guest for sure confirmed. It's Erica. Why am I getting a, a brain freeze? Erica. Erica. She is. <laughs> she's a farmer. But oh, fantastic! Taking it wow. to a really great level. So, wow. um, and she was a banker. Wow. Who opted to go into agriculture. Wow. So, Erica Phillip. And yes. here why that is so great. Because next week is Global um, Money Week. Mm. And I'm trying to find the theme. I was supposed to send this to you. Um, here are the theme. Um, plan your money. Plant your future. Ooh. Okay. What? So, yes. I, so I, Erica, I was supposed to send this to you today to ask you if Erica is still coming because if she yes. is, it's a perfect. Yes. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So next week we're gonna we're gonna plant we're gonna fork up the land and plant our future. <laughs> yes. And, and the thing with Erica that I really like, um, she is she's very progressive, and when you see her, you don't see the typical farmer type of person that we somehow tend to associate with people in agriculture. So she is, she's different, she's focused, she she has your goods all nicely packaged. Wow. Good for her. I heard her on Jackie. She is the awesome. other Jackie Queen, the Andrew show the other day. She's wow. awesome. Jackie Queen, I should say. And um she I was quite impressed. Very yes. personable, very she's articulate. Awesome. Don't miss it, folks, and tell your friends. Well, I'll yep. definitely be there. Please. Fantastic. Okay. Bev, we have to make sure you we add you to our mailing list. Please. Yes. Send out a newsletter and we remind everyone. Excellent. So, 
Excellent. Okay, well, folks, Thank you I for having hold me. Up dinner. I know. I know. Women on the move have places to be and things to do. That's and correct. I'm doing an instruction. I'm instructing this evening, teaching Fantastic. a few people who are preparing oh, wow. to take um, a civil service exam. So, oh wow! You know, I'm doing that, and you know, I just keep moving. Keep moving. Oh, we That's know you, Jill. That's yes. what we do. All, All right, right so nice. folks, it's been another edition. We'll see you next week, same time. And uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to play the game again next week and have some fun. And congrats to Giselle. Continue to um, celebrate National Reading Month as well as Women's History Month. March is special. March is special. Have a nice evening, everyone. Bye, Take everyone. care.